Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, this is a great book by Jack Mormon. I did a review of all four of them, and I say review, I mean, it's just like a cursory look. Decided I'd do a little deeper dive into all four of these. And this is a big time subject right here. And it's printed by Faith Baptist Church Publications, Fort Pierce, Florida. Uh, fpcpublications.com I got it off AV but missing in modern Bibles and analysis of the NIV I'll let you see kind of how it's set up in here turned a few different pages it's uh, extremely pertinent because most people don't know that the New International Version of the Bible is somewhere around 64,000 words shorter than the King James Version of the Bible and it is a dynamic equivalence translation so it actually Actually should be somewhat larger than the uh King James Version, even with the few thousand italicized words in the King James Version, which I've done some videos on that, Lord willing to do some more on the italicized words. Now, some people say you should never compare Bible version to Bible version. Now, I would say a rejoinder to that. I would say that is incorrect. First of all, most people are not reading Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. They are reading the Bible versions in their languages. Secondly, all Bible versions are, are representations of text types, such, such as the Nestle's Island 29th edition, the UBS 5th edition, and so on and so forth. And so, or the majority text or the Byzantine text or whichever one they, they want to use. So I would say that is incorrect. First of all, they're representative of text types. Secondly, they're what the overwhelming majority of the people are reading. And so, you know, something's not going to be missing in the NIV unless it's missing in a Greek or Hebrew text through the so-called science of textual criticism. I'm giving you a little look at uh, what's actually contained in here, the table of contents. So, yeah, I don't think that's a valid criticism at all. It's just something, you know, certain hubris or something like that. Certain... Uh, intellectual scholasticism that is not valid. So missing in modern Bibles and analysis, the NIV, just, he did a lot of groundbreaking work in this. We'll see what year this was written in. Let's take a look. Mormon's just done great work. He's not a good debater. Copyright 96 and 204. He gets eviscerated. Eviscerated. I mean, his bow, he was disemboweled by... Uh, I want to show you this page, too. Um, by uh, James White. James White is an incredible debater and also knows how to use social media and PowerPoint well. So that's the thing, you can't always get truth from debates because somebody can debate well with error and hold the truth and not be able to present it well. And so just because somebody wins a debate doesn't mean their point was right. That's why I like Steve Ritchie so much. He was just fantastic in debating um, let's see here how many pages is this 83 pages so um, I just wanted to, to read this to you an actual count okay the key determinant in the Westcott Hort theory is that reading supported by both Aleph and B or Vaticanus and Sinaiticus should usually be incorporated in the text when they divide preference will generally be given to B Taking into account that the Vaticanus manuscripts only goes to Hebrews 9.14 and omits 1 Timothy and Philemon, I counted 204 instances in the Nestle's Allen 26 apparatus where the text departed from an Aleph B reading. This in most cases would also represent a departure from the Hort text. The count was of the original readings of Aleph and B, not the alterations of a later scribe. 
these were spread over to 555 pages of text an average one departure for every 2.7 pages or one departure for every 32 verses this is hardly a scratch on the surface the question of how often Aleph B unite and divide will be dealt with in appendix 3 Thus, whatever other differences may exist between Westcott and Horton in these standard texts, there is very little at this crucial point. It is still an Aleph B text. In fact, eclecticism is merely a new way of describing textual criticism's dilemma in handling the wide disparity among Alexandrian manuscripts to which it is so committed. It is precisely because of this disparity that they must exercise their eclectic faculties. For them, it is still how to make do with Codex B and its allies, is that famous book of Hoskier. Herman Hoskier said. So, and that's really what Bergon pointed out in the 1880s still holds true today. That Alex Drinus, B, and Vaticanus, excuse me, Aleph, Sinaiticus, differ from themselves several thousands of times in the Gospels alone. So it is not a unified text base as it's presented. It is corrupt manuscripts that were put in the dustbin of history or even fraudulently done as opposed to the text that is everywhere received that has almost no differences in it among many thousands of manuscripts great book and he's a great scholar i get it god bless talk with you later in jesus name